Thanks, Chair. This presentation will introduce a new 2D macroscopic material and its application to energy harvesting. The material is exfoliated and reassembled graphite, nicknamed ERG. It has previously allowed us to make flexible, inexpensive and corrosion-resistant electrodes for various purposes. This presentation will show their application for harvesting energy from the atmospheric moisture that we call hydroelectricity. Discovering ERG resulted from exploring the hypothesis presented by Bjorn Lindemann earlier in the century on the amphiphilic character of cellulose. Cellulose is known as a hydrophilic solid, but it's also oleophilic. Its amphiphilic character derives from the structure of cellulose chains, with a flat hydrophobic surfaces surrounded by hydrophilic edges. The singular structure allows cellulose chains to absorb on graphite flat surfaces, dismantling the crystals. Thus, cellulose is an effective exfoliant and water dispersant for graphite, producing water dispersions that dry on many surfaces, forming highly conductive films. ERD film resistivity is higher than graphite and much higher than graphene, but the cohesive films with thousands of lamellae show low surface resistance. ERG dispersions are prepared by adding graphite powder to alkaline AQL cellulose solutions and mixing, taking care to separate lamellae but not breaking them. The dispersions easily cut different surfaces using various painting and coating techniques. The equipment used is widespread in painting industry and the fabrication process requires mild conditions only. Thus, process scaling up should not present significant difficulties. Our current capacity is 100 kg dispersion per day. The result of painting it on wood, paper, brick, and many other materials is an adherent electrically conductive surface. ERG coatings are multifunctional. They are electrically conductive and are suitable for making flexible circuitry on various surfaces. They have already been used to make electrodes for electrochemistry, electroanalysis, and environmental control. ERG electrodes are inexpensive and resistant to corrosion, which makes them well suited for hydroelectricity. Completely different applications are highly efficient heaters and flame resistant coatings for wood. Hydroelectricity is energy harvesting from atmospheric moisture. It was first demonstrated in 2010 when we showed that metals acquire charge under high humidity. This finding opposed prevailing paradigm, but charge exchange with the atmosphere also explained many other phenomena. We explained it by considering the partition of adsorbed or intercalated water ions from atmospheric water vapor, analogous to well-known electrification of solid and liquid interfaces. Energy harvesting from atmosphere's moisture has been verified by many authors in different countries using different materials, arrangements, and following our, but also other explanations. 
A few examples are in this slide showing results obtained using various types of graphene protein nanowires and metals. Assessment of the performance of a hydroelectric cell starts by allowing it to charge spontaneously for a given time. Connecting the cell to a capacitor using the switch seen in the schematic circuit allows charge transfer. Switching is controlled by a computer using a program that allows us to change the duration of each step. Recording the voltage between cell terminals and across the capacitor terminals as a function of time allows us to calculate the harvested and delivered energy and power. Harvested energy increases when the electrodes are wetted by just touching the water. However, soaking the electrodes decreases the amount of harvested energy. This slide shows the performance of a cell within a plastic box placed outdoors for a few days while the cell and the capacitor voltages were measured continuously. Cell and capacitor voltages increase during the day due to the higher temperature and thus to the higher partial water vapor pressure during the warmer hours. The energy transfer to a capacitor decreased during the cold, cooler nights, showing that the process responsible for keeping the electric current is strongly temperature-dependent, endothermic. Hydroelectric cells are bipolar, and their connection in series or parallel arrangements is easy. A four-cell battery made from improved electrode materials delivers 50 milliwatt continuously to a resistive load. These cells were also connected to a switching circuit, supplying energy to 12 LEDs during 4 minutes and resting for 1.5 minutes for recharge, cyclically for many hours, many times. This table allows a comparison between different devices harvesting energy from atmospheric moisture. The devices just presented show impressive performances, mainly due to the facility to build sizable cells thanks to the availability of the electrode materials. Using the water splitting reaction as an energy source may look surprising since this is well known as a non-spontaneous reaction under standard conditions. However, in the present case, this reaction occurs in an open and non-electroneutral system, when water may enter freely while the resulting gases can also leave it freely. The thermodynamic reaction quotient QR is then much lower than the equilibrium constant continuously driving the reaction towards the products. Indeed, hydroelectric cells stop working if they are within closed packages. Concluding, exfoliated and reassembled graphite make suitable electrodes for hydroelectric cells that allow their scaling, achieving unprecedented power and voltage outputs. Materials cost is low, allowing us to foresee the practical use of hydroelectricity, delivering power to IoT and other devices in remote environments. I thank the Brazilian funding agencies CAPES, CNPQ, FAPESP, and our organizations on behalf of all authors. I also thank you for your kind attention.